So my name is Emma Dowie. I'm a marketing manager at IntelliCorp. I'm based uh, over in the UK. And with me on the call today is Richard Hurst. He's our senior product specialist, and he's based also in the UK. Um, so just a couple of things before we get started. Um, all the lines are on mute. Uh, so if you have any questions, then please submit them to uh, myself using the chat panel. Um, we'll try and get through as many questions as we can at the end of um, at the end of the demo. Uh, we've only got 30 minutes today, though, so we don't want to um, keep you for too long. So if there are lots of questions coming in, then we promise to follow up afterwards via email. Um, so still send them along, and we'll get back to you if we don't get through to your question. Um, and we're recording the session today as well, so we'll send over the recording and the slides afterwards um, so you can share those. With that, Rich, I'm going to hand it over to you. Um, let me just make you presenter. So you can share your screen as it comes through. Yep. Brilliant. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Emma. Um, hello, everybody. Uh, as Emma said, I'm Richard Hurst. I'm a, a product specialist here at Intellicorp. And uh, today we're going to talk about uh, synchronization of your SAP systems. Um, okay, and really when we start thinking about synchronization, um, there's lots of different scenarios I suppose you could you could talk about when you talk about this, this problem. Um, it could be that you're looking to uh, consolidate uh, your SAP systems that are dotted around the world. Uh, you know, you may have different instances in different countries. You want to bring those together. Uh, you may be looking at doing mergers and acquisitions. So again, you might want to bring those uh, other SAP systems on board on board yours. Um, you may be simply trying to keep some aspects of your dev, your QA, your production environment uh, synchronized. Uh, could be, for instance, you know, you're looking at doing some user acceptance testing, and you want to make sure that you've got the right config on that. Um, QA environment or the right master data on that, that environment. Uh, so we can do, um, you know, look at the differences between production and your QA environment. You may have things like dual landscapes where you've got projects going on and business as usual uh, landscapes, and there's some element of synchronization that you need to do there. And we do have some customers that have a clone systems. So when they make a change, those those changes have to go into all of those systems. Uh, and checking and auditing those types of things are also important and part of this whole challenge. Uh, so when I go through the demonstration today, you'll, you know, I'm not going to talk about all these different aspects, but you can imagine you can use the things I'll show you in all these different types of scenarios. Um, how do we do this? Uh, well, one of the things we want to do is do this this fast. You know, we don't want to be uh, spending months and months in business process workshops, or we don't want to be waiting for our SAP systems to, to, you know, track and trace things that are happening in our systems. We want to do this this quickly, so you can get through these projects and deliver these projects quickly back to the business. Uh, and the way that we do that is we can use both our tools here called Live Compare and Live Model. Um, the whole point of these is. Uh, we want to, you know, as I say, deploy these very quickly, and within a day, you should be getting results uh, back to the business. The whole point of this is to be able to, as I say, um, deliver these projects quickly, um, accurately, with no risk to your production system. Uh, so that hopefully sets the scene a little bit. Uh, I'm going to now switch into um, the demo itself. Um, just let me do that. And I'm going to start off, actually, in the Live Compare product. Um, if, if you haven't seen Live Compare before, um, this is basically, uh, or the, the view you're seeing on the screen right now, is the consumer view. This is typically what the consumer or the, a day-to-day -day user would use Live Compare for. Um, there are a whole bunch of different apps covering different types of, uh, or, or answering different types of questions that you may need to get out of your SAP systems. Uh, and there's a there's an app store here, so if I'm, you know, if I want to go and find a different uh, app that solves my question, I can go into here. Uh, but today, I'm just going to focus firstly on this business process analysis app. Uh, when I click into this 
Um, it actually doesn't matter which app I'm running, it's the same user experience uh, if I'm a consumer. I have the setup of the app on the left and I have the results of the app on the right hand side. Um, this is a business process analysis, so when I actually click into here, it asks, expects me to put in some parameters for the app. Uh, and what we're going to do here is, um, you know, look at three different systems, look how those systems are running together because we're thinking about doing a consolidation of these systems. So from a user point of view, I can enter my SAP system. So I've got one for the US, one for the UK, one for Europe, uh, and I'm just going to give it a separate name in here. And once I've set those um, parameters up, I can hit the run button and that will go off and start analyzing those three SAP systems uh, and working out how the business processes are actually implemented in those systems. What it's going to then do, it's going to, to uh, give all those results to our live model product so you can start to see um, through the diagrams, which I'll show you in a second, what that looks like. Uh, and then we'll come back and we'll look at the results, the further results that we have in here. So I've now switched into, into live model. Um, what you see here is uh, a model of SAP processes. So down here you can see there's um, an order to cash process. And underneath here we have various sub-processes that cover that whole scenario. Uh, and if I drill through the hierarchy here, you'll see there are transactions or the transactions that support those processes are all documented in this model. Uh, this model comes with the product. So again, we're not you know, starting from scratch. We already have the reference model available for you to start using it. Um, we also have diagrams at various levels that you can see and understand um, how those processes work and link together. Uh, and I'm just going to switch on uh, something we call a display specification. So this is actually the information that's coming from Live Compare. So I'm going to select that and just let me refresh this diagram. Okay. And now you'll start to see these shapes appear on the nodes in the diagram. And this is actually showing me the usage from all those three systems uh, on this one common business process model. Uh, so each each shape represents a different system, but these could be used to, to represent different user groups or maybe different plants or some other organizational uh, aspect that you want to analyze. Uh, so these are completely configurable. It just so happens today we're looking at three specific SAP systems in three uh, global regions. Um, if I click on the uh, live capture summary here, you can actually get right down to the, the transactions that um, are being run in the, in the system against this process model. Right, so I can start to see again with the color coding, the amount of times these transactions have been run in these different systems. Uh, which will help obviously if you're starting to design your processes or trying to bring them together, you need to understand the critical ones that have been run lots of times uh, in, as part of your business. Um, you'll also see that, that not every node or every bit of the diagram has a shape around it. So this is showing me where there are real differences in the business process. You'll see, for instance, the customer inquiry um, sub-process there has, hasn't got a green uh, diamond around it. So I know that the Europeans are not using that particular functionality in SAP. I can see in the sales summary processing, there's no blue uh, hexagon around there. So I can see that the, the, that the UK are not using that particular process. Uh, so this is a really good way of identifying those differences at the business process level. Um, I've also added in some custom um, processes here. So, uh, you know, these are typically your, your Z transactions that are running as part of your business process. And once they're added into the model, they become just like any other transaction. So when you run this analysis, uh, you'll still get the shapes on the, on the, um, on the nodes here in the diagram. Uh, so you can see exactly where your custom processes happen uh, in these different scenarios. Uh, there are also flow diagrams here in this, uh, at this level. 
So actually, as well as looking at that decomposition diagram that we just saw, you can see how those processes link together to, to form the whole uh, scenario from, from top to bottom. You can do things like uh, animate these and, and create walkthroughs, uh, and this plays into our integration with HP, so uh, you can take those walkthroughs and start creating things like test scenarios or test plans in HP as well. Okay. Um, so it's a very quick overview of, of Live Model. Um, it also integrates with uh, Solution Manager as well, um, but I'm going to switch back into Live Compare now so we'll, we'll get into more detail as we go through. I'm just going to refresh my screen here. Uh, so you actually see now that, that the one that I ran uh, is finished uh, just here, and I can click into my results. Uh, here I've got a, a dashboard that shows me actually that same information you saw in live model. Um, across the board it's showing me the, uh, the volumes of transactions that are used in the different application areas of SAP. Uh, so you can see some big spikes here for uh, for the custom code, uh, stuff around finance. So you can actually see there's a good spread of common processes across the board here, uh, which may help your consolidation as you go forward. Uh, you'll also see down here there's uh, some pie charts that show uh, the custom versus standard usage uh, across those different SAP systems. Uh, for those of you who already have Live Compare, you, you re probably recognize this pie chart because it's part of the impact analysis app that we have. Um, and again, this is you know very key information when you're starting out those projects. How much custom code have I got uh, running in my systems? Uh, and it's interesting to see that you know, if, if you look at the volume here of the US, they've got lots of volume, but actually the percentage is, is less than, than uh, the UK. Uh, so the UK have, you know, really customized their system. Uh, maybe that's something to do with our uh, ongoing thing with Brexit. I don't know, um, but you'll start to see uh, that information here, which is, uh, which is again, key, key for your projects. Uh, obviously, that was all kind of quite high level. We've gone and looked at the business processes. We've looked at how those processes are running across the different application areas of SAP. Uh, if I want to get into more detail, so maybe I'm a, a developer or, or a, you know, a team, team leader of, of a development team, uh, and I want to start understanding actually where those, for instance, where those custom programs may differ across systems, then I have another app here that I can go into. Um, which is actually doing a comparison across all of those three systems. Um, I'm not going to go into the, well, actually, I will go into the details here. Um, again, it's very similar to the um, setup that we had a second ago, so we can point it to, you know, two or three different SAP systems here. Um, and as an example, you know, I'm only interested in the MM uh, custom code that's in the MM. Um, application area, so I'm going to put those in and I want to analyze those. And this is actually going to do a comparison of those custom programs at the code level uh, to show me where the differences are. Uh, and again, if I click on here, I get uh, a dashboard that shows me, um, based on that MM, those MM uh, programs, uh, what's the same. So I've compared the UK with the US. I can see there are 11 programs that are the same. There are 14 that exist in both um, systems, but are actually different. And there are 139 that are only in my uh, UK system. So again, if I was trying to consolidate or synchronize those, uh, I'd have to look at those and say whether I need to bring those across as part of the consolidation, or can I find something in the US system that can take that, that, that functionality. And that's the same with the, UK, the, the comparison with the EU system as well. Uh, if I drill down a little bit more, I then can start to see the individual programs and the, the status of those programs across the board. So I can see that either they're same or they're different. Let me just close that down. Um, so that's a you know, again, we've gone, we're going from high level down through the, the te more technical implementation of SAP. Uh, what I'm going to do now is actually switch into the studio of Live Compare, um, just to show you what happens here. 
because when I when I actually run an app, uh, what's actually happening in the background is it's running uh, one of our uh, templates that come with the product. So if I just show you very quickly the templates, you can see there are a whole bunch of templates here that um, are designed to uh, be run at different parts of your SAP projects or operationally day to day. Uh, you can see there's one that's called synchronization, which is obviously what we're talking about uh, today. Uh, if I want to run one of these apps, I can either run it as you saw through the consumer view, or I can, if I want to uh, copy it into something we call a workspace and run it from, from that workspace. Um, so I'm going to show you now you know, now I'm, uh, you know, a real developer, and I want to understand all those differences in that custom code, uh, because it's my job to actually get these things synchronized and working on one system. Uh, so I have a workflow here that's from the synchronization template. It's called Compare Objects, uh, and if you think about it, it's very much like setting an, up an app. It needs, you know, my two SAP systems that I want to compare and it needs some information of what I want it to compare. Uh, in this case, I've given it a development class. Uh, so this is one of our own development classes. Uh, and that will go away and find all the objects in that development class and compare them for me. Uh, there are some smart filtering here. So I can really focus on, if I look at the results here, exactly what's different or what's the same or what's unique to either of those systems. Uh, again, just drilling through the hierarchy here, I can still see the development class. Let's just make this a little bit bigger for you. Uh, and I can see that there's some red X's here on these includes. So I know very quickly that there are some differences uh, with, this, with these particular objects. And clicking on those, uh, this object now takes me to the more detailed screen. And you can see there's a a tab here that's called code. And if I click on that, it actually takes me right down into the ABAP code of this include. And I can start to see the differences at those individual rows of, of code or lines of code where they are different. Again, there's um, color coding here. So I can see very quickly that if it's red, I know that that code exists in both systems, um, but it's different in some way. Uh, if it's pink, I know it exists only in my second system. Uh, and if it was blue, it would be highlighted over here in system one, and that would be only in my system one system. Um, so uh, again, you know, just, just thinking about drilling down and getting to the details of, of, the, uh, of these individual, individual objects at the code level. Um, so to, from a developer point of view, if I was more of a maybe a, a business analyst or maybe a key user or somebody who's in charge of maybe master data, I want to actually start looking at the data in SAP um, rather than the sort of technical objects, if you like. Uh, so again, there are workflows uh, available to you in the synchronization template. And uh, I've run one that's all around IMG. So I want to compare my configuration in my SAP systems. And much like the workflow I just showed you, uh, I can come to the bottom here and I can open this up. And if there's any uh, business analysts or people who do configuration in uh, in your SAP systems, you'll recognize, uh, hopefully you'll recognize the, the hierarchy here. This is the, the IMG hierarchy. And if I click on uh, this node of the of the hierarchy, I can it brings me back all the tables that are concerned with external service management configuration, and I'm just going to choose one table here, which then takes me into the rows of data for this particular table. Okay, and I get a summary view first, so I can see there are a total of 41 rows in this table. 36 are the same. That's great. I can kind of ignore those. Uh, but there are five that are different. So I want to focus in on those five. Uh, I click on the contents. And all being well, there we go. It shows me the contents, the rows, individual rows of those particular tables. Um, you'll see here we have the technical names of the fields. If I want to know what the, um, 
the, the descriptions are, I can turn, turn the view round and look at it like this, and I can start to see uh, the descriptions of those fields. So I can see very quickly that uh, on this particular row, uh, I can see that the part the partner determination procedure is set to LF, my second system, and it's not set in my uh, first system. Uh, you'll also notice that these there are these little cogs here, um, which are part of our smart filtering. So I've got them switched to only look at things that are different, but I can switch these around if I want to and look at only things that may be in system one or system two all are actually the same. Uh, I can also take these and copy them straight into Excel uh, if, if you need to do that. Um, so that was more uh, config type of analysis um, and just to kind of carry on with that theme um, from a master data point of view, you know, again, I want to be able to compare my master data across, make sure they're in sync uh, and I can do that here. I've got an example where I've put the, uh, it's the Mara table here. And just like you saw with the IMG compare, I can click through those and see uh, the differences again in, in those particular uh, areas of master data that I'm interested in. So I can see that this material has some different settings here uh, that may cause problems if I was to bring this information together on one system or try to synchronize them. Uh, and last, last but not least, I just wanted to show this because we talked about, um, you know, the, 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 the config and the, the data. Uh, if we want to have a look at the uh, fields itself, uh, so this is more of a, of a technical analysis, I suppose. I can show uh, the differences in the attributes of the table as well. And again, that's important because uh, if you're, uh, you know, looking to consolidate or do up, even do upgrades of your SAP system, understanding where fields have changed in tables is a key thing. Uh, maybe there are new tables or new fields within tables uh, that you need to understand because you may want to make use of those as you go through your projects. Okay, uh, so that's the, that's kind of the demo uh, finished now. I'm just going to switch back into the, the presentation. Um, so just to summarize, hopefully that you've seen uh, by using live model and live compare, we can go really from a very high level business um, process view of the world right down into the technical um, implementation of your SAP systems and do comparisons across the board or, or of all of those things. Um, it's very fast to uh, get these results, you know, deploy it in a day, uh, you're going to start getting results that quickly. Uh, so it's very fast to, to start understanding. Um, and I think one of the things that I like, you know, I've, I've been in business process workshops where we've used live model uh, and we've thrown those shapes up onto the model and it makes it uh, a lot easier to go through those, those processes and understand exactly how they're being used because it's really based on fact. You know, it's, it's, uh, it depoliticizes those workshops, if you like, um, because no one can argue with those transactions that are being used uh, from those systems that, that, are, that are presented on that model. Uh, so I think it's a, it's a real very powerful tool when you start looking at it in terms of doing those types of, of uh, workshops and analysis for your business processes. Uh, with that, I'm going to just stop and I'm going to ask if there are any questions. Thanks, Rich. Um, yeah, we've had quite a few questions come in um, while you were doing the demo, so I'm going to ask um, a few now. If we don't get to your question, then we will follow up with you, as I said at the beginning. Um, so first of all, um, on the process model, Rich, what data are you using to generate the shapes? Uh, okay, so the data actually comes from your SAP production systems, and it's the it's the performance history data. So if anyone's ever run the ST03 transaction in SAP, it's gathering the same data. Um, the thing about Live Compare is it once you have Live Compare installed, it will go and collect that data uh, every month and keep it for you. So actually you can build up a good history of that data uh, over 13 months. So you've got a complete fiscal year and you don't have to worry about how much data is in your SAP system. Um, so that's where that's coming from. OK. 
Okay, thanks, Rich. Um, another question that came in, does life compare and life model require anything to be installed on the SAP side or does it integrate directly with the solution manager? Uh, okay, so um, in life compare, um, there are elements of life compare that have to be installed in your SAP systems. Uh, there are transports that we provide uh, as part of the, the install. Uh, all of those objects are certified by SAP and they're all in our na own namespace. Uh, so they have to be deployed. Similarly with the integration between live model and solution manager, there also is a part of live model, again, another transport that goes into your solution manager um, environment to make that integration work. Um, the integration with solution manager is two-way. So if you have already built some business process content in Solution Manager, we can bring that back into Live Model, do that analysis that I showed you with the shapes, and push it back into Solution Manager once you've updated it. Okay, thanks, Bridge. Um, I've got a question here on custom processes. So how easy is it to add custom processes into the business process model? Okay. Um, so one of the things that Live Compare does with its business process analysis is it uh, it looks at the custom code. Obviously, when we go that into we put that into the reference model, that custom code doesn't exist. Uh, so uh, Live Compare will upload that custom code uh, into your model, and it places it wherever you've kind of tagged that uh, custom code with your application area. Um, Information. So, uh, if you've got good, app if you you know if your developers have good, done a good job and they've created some custom program and they've tagged it with the right area, uh, it will get put in the right area in the model. Um, if you haven't, then it will still get you know still get uploaded into the model. You just might have to drag and drop it into the right area. Okay. Thanks, Rich. A question for me, actually. Um, can we get the recording of the presentation? Yes. Um, we'll be sending this out with the slides um, after the session. Uh, so we'll send it out to you. Not a problem. Um, another question for you, Rich. Uh, can I document any processes in live model, or is it just SAP? Uh, yeah, you can document anything you want. Um, obviously, the, the big benefit of live model is it already comes with the SAP reference model, uh, but there's nothing stopping you, you know, uh, adding new processes in there that, that you know happen in other systems or manual processes that you might have to build up a complete picture. So that is okay. possible, yes. Great. Another question is, um, does the technical comparison you showed us to compare all attributes of an object? Uh, okay, yeah, so that's, that's a, a, a good question, actually. So uh, when I was showing you the, the code comparison or the the comparison of the fields, uh, we only compare certain attributes because if we compared everything, you would probably get a lot of false positives. So, for instance, we don't compare the, co the, the comments in the ABAP code by default because, you know, it, it doesn't really affect what's going to happen when you merge those or synchronize those systems up. Uh, you can switch those on if you want to. There's something called the object attribute filter, which you can... Um, which you can change if you want, but as you put the product in, the, um, those attributes are set to a default, which are just really significant um, things that you need to focus on. Okay, great. Um, another question that came through is, can the business process analysis be run on just one system, or um, does there have to be multiple systems? Uh, okay. Um, no, you can run it. Uh, on any amount of systems that you want. Those shapes that I showed you, you can have you know, as, as many as you want if, if you can work out uh, the different shapes and the colors. Um, so typically people you will use those colors and shapes to, to analyze as many systems as they want. You can use it, for instance, to audit your business process. You know, maybe you want to run it once a month and you can say that um, very quickly, you can see whether people are keeping to your business processes that you've designed or if they've started going off down another route and doing something that you didn't ex expect them to. Um, so, yeah, you can run it on any number of systems. Okay. Thanks, Rich. Another um, question that I had come through was how much effort is required? You know, what do we need to get, um, what do we need to do to get going with the software? Uh, okay. Well, once you've you know, once you've got it installed, um, you can run 
any of those apps straight away as soon as, the, as soon as it's installed and start getting those results. Um, very quickly you'll get those results into live model, um, so you'll start to see those shapes if you want to start doing that. Um, we can add the custom code in there as well, um, and then you might want to start thinking about how you're going to deploy that with live model, you know, maybe you want to start running some workshops or analyzing those processes. Uh, with live compare, you know, just put it in and, and any of those comparisons that I've shown you uh, today will be run and done some in a couple of minutes, some might take a few hours to run. Okay, thanks Rich. Well, we've come, um, we're up um, on time now, it's um, half past six here in the UK, half past ten on the Pacific Coast. I still have a couple more questions, but we will follow up with you after email. Um, Rich, if you just move on to the next slide. Um, oh, sorry. If yep. you have any further questions for us, then please contact us via email. Um, we're on all the social channels as well, but just drop us a line um, if you want to follow up with anything that we discussed today. Um, again, we will send out the recording and the slides as well. Um, so thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Rich, uh, for the demo. And yeah, I hope it was useful. Thank you. Thanks, Emma. Yes.